Okay, hi, today we're looking at subtopic 5.2, reactions of acids and bases. In the screen here you can see that there are many acids, some of which are sources of acids around the home, which we can see on the left hand side, as well as sources that we will find in the chemistry lab. Um, we'll be looking at both of these during this um, presentation. Our learning objective for today is that non-metal oxides are commonly acidic and they generate oxy acids when dissolved in water. Um, we will see that uh, we need to be able to draw many structural formulae ranging from carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide right through to sulfuric acid. Um, and so we'll have a look at how to do that. Um, we're looking at oxides of non-metals and acids, and both of these are molecular compounds. The shapes of compounds are, used, explain, are explained using the VSEPR theory. This is nothing new. We've used this previously this year. Um, what is new, though, is that we're looking in some of these cases as an expansion of the octet. The third electron shell, if we have a think about that, has the ability to hold 18 electrons, but we usually find that they only hold eight. In this case here, the atoms of the chemical elements in period three from groups five to seven are able to expand their octet when forming molecules. And they have the ability to share all of the valence electrons and so acquire more than eight electrons in the valence shell. And you'll see that in a moment. So these are the structural formulae that you will need to know in stage one chemistry. So we need to be able to draw from our carbon dioxide here, which we've drawn before. We also should be able to draw CO3 2 minus, um, as well as here we've got um, H2CO3. Following we have sulfur dioxide, so the structure again, we've seen the, v, uh, the V shaped structure previously. Down the bottom here we've got our SO3 2 minus, and over here our H2SO3. Our next um, screen here, we're looking at SO3. If you have a think about it, previously we had our SO2 um, and that was V-shaped. Here we have a trigonal planar. There are six bonding electron pairs within the molecule of our sulfur trioxide. These electron pairs are involved in um, three lots of double covalent bonds between the sulfur and the oxygen atoms. Um, for that to happen, it has expanded its octet. Um, and instead of having, like we did previously, a V-shaped structure, now we have um, the three uh, oxygens coming away from our sulfur here. We also, not only do we need to be able to draw this, but also down here we need to be able to draw SO4 2 minus and down here H2SO4. Um, we also have P4O10. This structure is not as easy to draw, um, but it is required for stage one chemistry. And then here we have our um, PO4-3 minus and down here our H3PO4. Um, so they're the structures that you need to be able to draw in stage one chemistry. The oxides, um, as we said, are commonly acidic if they are oxides of non-metals and they generated the oxy acids in, when dissolved in water. So we need to be able to write the equations of that. Um, they, as I said, are non-metallic uh, elements. And here's the first example. So we have carbon dioxide with water. Um, what it does is it forms carbonic acid, H2CO3. So we just have our carbon dioxide plus water goes to H2CO3. Another example of an equation that you need to be able to do is sulfur dioxide reacting with water to form sulfurous acid, which is our H2SO3. We saw that uh, diagram previously, and our equation is here. The next one we need to know is SO3 with water, um, and so that one there forms sulfuric acid. Um, and again, you've seen that in the lab when it is quite dangerous. Um, and then P2O5 with water, and that's the one that's going to form our phosphoric acid, our H3PO4. So we do need to know each of those equations, so if you can take a note of those, please. The next learning objective is that we now look at our metallic oxides. These are commonly basic um, and they generate hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. So our new equations are here. We need to show Na2 oxide, um, potassium oxide and calcium oxide. And we also need to be able to show the proton transfer between the acid and the base. 
So here we have our NO, Na2 oxide, so sodium oxide with water. So here's our reaction here and it forms into our hydroxide ions and our sodium salt. Um, here's our next equation, so potassium oxide. Again, because this is a metallic oxide, it will form hydroxide ions. Our third one, calcium oxide, and once again forms our hydroxide ions. You need to make sure that your equations are fully balanced as well. So we can see that hydroxide ions are formed in the solution. That's going to increase our pH. All of these reactions are exothermic, and in the previous topic we talked about endothermic and exothermic reactions. And this is an, a release of energy because the cations and anions are hydrated by water molecule. Our last science understanding that we need to look for this one here is that we've got different types of equations and we can predict the um, products if we know what reactants we have. So here's our general equation here, an acid plus a metal oxide. An acid plus a metal oxide will go to water and a salt. Here's our general and I've given you two examples here. So here's our acid with our metal oxide and it's going to water and a salt you need to make sure they are balanced so we would need to put a two in the front of this one here Oops. Um, and now we have a balanced equation the second one here i have balanced already and so we have our acid plus our metal oxide and it's going to water and here's our salt our next general equation is an acid plus a hydroxide. Now these ones here, an acid plus a hydroxide goes to water and a salt. So here's our general equation. Here's our acid. Here's our hydroxide and water plus a salt. Check that it's balanced. Yes, it is. Acid plus a hydroxide and it's going to water and a salt. Once again, we need to just check that that is balanced. Yes, it is. Our next example is an acid plus a carbonate. That one goes to water, carbon dioxide and a salt. So here we've got an example here. Here's our acid, here's our carbonate. So water, carbon dioxide and a salt. Second example, acid plus this one here is a um, hydrogen carbonate or a bicarbonate. Acid, carbon dioxide and a salt. Again, check that they're balanced. Next example is an acid plus a metal. This one here gives hydrogen gas plus a salt. So acid, metal, hydrogen gas, and here's our salt. Um, this one here we would need to balance, and we'd need to put a two out of the front here. Now we've got balanced everything else. Second example, acid plus a um, metal. It's giving us hydrogen plus a salt. Um, so we, as I said, if we know what our reactants are, we can actually predict what our products will be. So if we react our acid with the base, we're going to get salt and water. Acid plus an active metal, we're going to get hydrogen. Um, acid plus a carbonate or a bicarbonate, we're going to get carbon dioxide. So we'll leave the slide here for the uh, moment and part two, we'll look at the next of these um, science understandings. See you next time.